I'm Al schmidt McCunis, Director at Fairfield Public Library, and I'm here today with Joy Craig, our Adult Services Specialist. Hello. So Joy, um, we, were, we were just talking about how, uh, you know, when we looked, into, it looked at our statistics from the last year, um, we've, we've, we, we can see now that actually um, we have twice the number of people visiting the library every week um, this year than we, compared to, with what we had last year. Wow. Yeah. Um, and definitely some days when we open up the, um, the book drop door and we see that huge mountain of books and things that have been returned, yes. you know, you can see that. There are other days where, where not much comes, comes in and on those days we maybe worry a little bit that our fine free policy um, is resulting in people not bringing back things on time or as they should. Um, you think there's any need to worry? I don't think there's any need to worry um, because we have the plan in place where if some, if an item is on hold um, and it's not coming back, then we call that person and let them know that they need to bring the item back. And so far, people have responded to that um, quite well. I don't think anybody that's had an item, a book, or anything placed on hold have to wait um, more than a week to mm -hmm. um, get their item. Uh, right. And um, the, way that, the way that it works with the fine free policy is that 28 days after the due date, um, the item is marked lost um, and the amount, the amount it would cost to replace the item is put on the cardholder's account. And at that time they can either pay the amount to replace the item if it's really lost or they can still bring in that item and replace it. But they should, they should bring the item in as soon as they can because we will consider using library funds to replace the item if it's something that um, is more popular or someone is placing a request for. That's true. And also if their um, item goes into lost status and their account is blocked, which means that they're not able to check out things or use um, our databases, our that's online right. databases. So that's a little more incentive to like bring things back. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's working. I feel like people also are coming in that have not had library cards for a long time and reinstating their cards. Um, mm -hmm. It would be fun to see that statistic as well. Definitely. I've, um, I've been seeing a lot of new visitors at the library who in the last two or three years I had, ne had never seen before. I agree, same with me. And um, younger people too, I feel like, mm -hmm. um, are coming in and asking about getting cards. Um, so I feel like that's really exciting and just, you know, reassuring yeah. to like see more of the public because that's one of our goals, I think. Um, mm -hmm. I believe there was a board meeting a week or so ago and you talked about the new strategic plan. That's right. Yeah, and um, definitely um, forming forming stronger connections in the community between the library and local nonprofits, other city departments, um, local businesses, um, the schools, uh, organizations like the um, the Fairfield Art Association, um, MIU's art faculty. Um, it's it's really exciting, and that, that those collaborations are already um, beginning now and. I just spoke earlier today with, with the head of the, the um, business department for MIU, and we're going to be having some, um, some collaborative events coming up soon. Nice. Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about um, the regularly occurring adult programs at the library. Oh, yeah. We have several regularly occurring adult programs at the library. Um, on the first Monday at 1.30, we have the genealogy group that meets in the conference room for now. It's headed up by a woman named Barbara Rainbow. Um, and she has an Ancestry.com account. Um, oh, that reminds me, Joy. You know, so just a, a couple weeks ago, um, actually it was, it was at last month's genealogy group meeting, um, there, were, there were probably 10 or 12 people there. Um, and, Bar you know, Barbara, she, she really appreciates the resources that Ancestry has to offer. Um, and, you know, she, she had encouraged me in the past to look into the Ancestry for Libraries program. Uh -huh. And actually, there happened to be another um, another attendee who who also was was aware of that that program um, and asked me if I could look into whether or not the library could could uh, acquire that for our city's uh, library card holders. And 
the, the good news is that I've made progress in, in getting our library, our very own Ancestry.com account, Ancestry for Libraries, and it will be available um, for use on site at the library. Okay. Um, and it could, it's probably going to be available by the end of this week. Oh, wow. And it's, it's, very, it's very, very close um, in all its features to um, the individual paid version of Ancestry.com. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how the genealogy group members make use of it, as well as our friends at the Carnegie Historical Museum. That's fantastic. I didn't know that. Okay, so then um, second, second thing that happens um, for adults at the Fairfield Public Library every month, uh, the second Saturday from 1.30 until 3 each month is board games and puzzles. And so um, we get together and usually there's, uh, like this month it's going to be Scrabble. Right. Uh, so I'm excited about that because I think there are lots of Scrabble players in town. And then I believe also that you've talked about acquiring other board games that will be check outable to patrons right. as well. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. And you know, many other libraries um, in Southeast Iowa and across the country have been building these um, these board game collections. And um, I think it's really important because some of these board games have kind of high price tags, um, and you you want to know whether or not something whether whether or not a game is something you want to play again and again, or whether it's appropriate for your family. Um, whether it's worth worth the investment yourself, and what's great about this is that at the library you can you can just borrow one of these 21st century board games um, and try it out. Borrow it for a week and see if maybe you you know you want to you want to borrow it again, <laughs> or or maybe just buy your own copy of it. Whatever you know. So I'm I'm very very excited about that, and we're going to be kind of seeking from um, some of the local board game aficionados as well as our friends at the Wanderers Hall about what what the best board games for us to get first would be. Wow. Okay, and, that's. And I'm I'm hoping that by the end of March we'll be able to um, start checking those board games out. Nice. All right. So then another adult program that we have um, we have the Write On Writers Group, and the Write On Writers Group is headed by David Patterson. And it meets on the second and fourth Sundays of each month from 1.30 until 3.30. And um, that's just, David makes a prompt. So you have, um, you work on the prompt in advance. And then when you come, you share um, what you've written and other things that you might have written. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that group is growing. Um, I think there are like six to nine people that attend each um, time it happens and there's room for more. So Great. if anybody feels, and it's any kind of um, writing too, which brings me to the second mm -hmm. thing. We also have a writing group called um, Shut Up and Write. And that happens each Tuesday in our conference room starting at 3.30 until 5.00. Um, and that's just a time where you can come and set with other people writing. It's quiet. You can write about anything you want. No questions asked, no reading, no feedback. It's just a time to, to write. So um, That's great. And how many months has that group been meeting now? I think that group has been meeting for about three months. That's quite a while. Um, maybe not quite that long. Maybe a mm -hmm. couple of months. Yeah. It's the end of right. February. Um, let's see. And oh, I, um, why don't you tell, tell me a little bit about some of, uh, a, a couple of your upcoming adult programs that are kind of special oh. for the month. Okay, great. So this month on Friday, March, or March 4th, Saturday, March 4th, we're having our first annual seed swap, um, which I'm really excited about. It's a little late if you wanted to maybe start peppers and tomatoes, but there's still time for lots of other things. Mm -hmm. um, and Faith Reeves from the Fairfield Garden Initiative is going to be there, and she's going to um, tell us about starting seeds so that if you don't know about starting seeds you can come it's just going to be a brief um, introduction so it's mm -hmm. not like you have to plan your whole Saturday afternoon you can just come and listen for a while bring an envelope bring some seeds that you have that you'd yeah. like to share with other people um, mm -hmm. I know people are excited about having some exotic exotic <laughs> kind of things and like swapping and sharing Ooh. with them them too I know that there are um, all ages like there are some middle schoolers that That's are great. into some of these exotic. Make fun of some of the kids who are taking the like who are like in that like ag class at the high school would come. Yes, that would be maybe really we fun. can uh, reach out to Augustine Harless and see if maybe he could promote this to his idea, kids. That's a great idea, Alex. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and then on Saturday the 18th, we're going to have um, Hans talk about his mm. bicycling trip across Iran. Um, and, and this he, is the second of his. 
This talks, is the right? second of his talks. The first had. one had a really great turnout. I think over 30 people came. Yeah, there were over 30 people. Um, and actually, it had been scheduled for this past weekend, and he rescheduled it. And I think mm -hmm. um, they said about 10 people came that wow. didn't get the word about it being rescheduled. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll be another great turnout. Um, he's, yeah, he's fun to listen to. So mm -hmm. um, we'll be excited about that. Um, and then there's also um, free Friday night film once a month mm -hmm. at the library. And that will be happening again in March. Right, that's going to be great. Check check the, the library uh, website's calendar um, to see to see what um, what film we're showing this month. Um, I also wanted to ask you, Alex. I know that the library is um, acquiring some new online subscriptions. Could that's you right. tell us tell us some more about that? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm really excited to um, to announce here today that um, by the end of this week we will have um, free access. Um, for all Fairfield uh, Public Library cardholders um, and those uh, cardholders who live in our contracting towns, free access to the New York Times Online and the Wall Street Journal Online, and this is a, this is really really great because Aww. I mean you know we we do have our local print newspapers in the library, yes. but we want to make sure that we have access to to national news as well on a daily basis and. The New, the New York Times is is gradually um, discontinuing its print publications, and starting um, a couple months ago, New York Times stopped stopped distributing the print new, print edition of the paper here in Fairfield. Yes. So we're gonna be we're gonna be having we're gonna be getting that um, online access to the New York Times. People can they can read the Times at home, or uh, or in the library. Um, they can also access this on their smartphones. In addition to the New York Times, we're also going to be getting the Wall Street Journal online. So people will have the option, you know, depending on, you know, what whatever their perspective may be, mm -hmm. um, what they favor. Um, they have those two options for the newspaper. That's nice. Yeah. And then we're also, in addition, in addition to those two newspapers, we're going to be getting um, active here pretty soon um, our consumerreports.org um, database. So people can, Yay. yes. So that's so really Consumer exciting. Reports also it went out of print an, a number of years ago, actually. From 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 my understanding, at least at least we weren't able to purchase it as a library anymore. So this is something that people have been asking for for a long time. Is yes. can we get the Consumer Reports back, please? Yes. And it was highly used the online version. Mm -hmm. So that's really good news. That's that's really that's yeah. exciting for me. Um, yeah, what kind of mattress to get, what kind of car to get, like, right. <laughs> it's right there. Yeah. And you can access this as well from home as long mm -hmm. as your library card is in good standing, is that correct? Right, right. Nice. Yeah, I really, I think it's, it's so important that we continue to expand our, our digital resources because the truth is people are, people are accessing a lot of things um, from home and from, from whatever, you know, from wherever they are with mm -hmm. their personal devices. and. It's just it's the trend, and libraries are are following that. And fortunately, there are some um, you know a lot of these companies are offering special library editions. Nice. Um, and I'm going to investigate more um, in the coming year about how we can further expand those resources. Nice. It, it may be that we'll start um, allocating some of our funds to um, purchasing digital versions of ebooks and e audio books that will be accessible just for. Um, people oh, here oh, in patients. Jefferson County. Yeah, um, you know the the Bridges Consortium that that we that we had this relationship with through the State Library of Iowa. Yes. Basically, what it is is um, all the public libraries across Iowa pooling their their their, sor their resources together and um, purchasing these eBooks and e-resources. And then the Libby app is how our patrons access those resources. But we also have the option of purchasing um, single single licenses for books and e-audio e books that um, would be used just by our, the people here in Fairfield. So yeah, lots of exciting things in store for us in the coming year. Wow. Um, one other thing I wanted to ask is I know we've just acquired three new um, Apple computers. Mm -hmm. And um, I wondered if you could talk a little bit about the Apple Studio that you're... Yeah. Yeah. So the Apple, the Apple Studio is... Um, it's um, a new a new model of um, Apple's really um, 
signature device. It has really, um, really powerful um, storage for, for devices, and um, it's equipped with the full Adobe Creative Suite. So it oh, has, wow. um, you know, Adobe Premiere, um, Photoshop, After Effects, Animator, all kinds of amazing programs. And we actually have a couple people on staff that are um, pretty well versed with Adobe's pro products, video editing, image editing. And so we also have some people in the community like Dick DeAngelis mm -hmm. who have yes. expressed that, you know, they, they would be definitely directing people to using our equipment and that's exciting. We also have these two additional Apple computers, one in the youth services area okay. near the young adult literature and then another one near the, the front desk area and these have Microsoft pro products, so Word, Excel, things like that. And, um, you know, these, these were purchased because, you know, we really wanted to diversify the kinds of devices we had here in the library. And we were familiar that, that um, at the, in the school district, they yes. exclusively use Apple computers, Thank the you. staff and the students. So we wanted the youth in our community to know that, that the library is a place for them and that um, we, you know, we, want to, we want them to feel comfortable using, using our resources there. Yes. Very nice. Well, anything else before we wrap it up? Well, I'm just um, really excited um, to, to see people visit the library. And again, people who maybe haven't been there for a few years and, or maybe people that have never had a library account we're really looking forward to, to meeting you soon. And um, yeah, again, very exciting things in store for our community here. Thank Aww. you so much for yeah, being with thanks, me, Joy. Thanks, Alex.